Yes, people, welcome back to the Rat Cave. It's Ratsy here for DJ Kit, and today I've finally been reunited with my boy, Sammy from Pioneer DJ. Welcome back, mate. Thank you, mate. It's good to be back. Good Even though it's not actually DJ Kit, it's good to be back. Yeah, so, cave. yeah, I used to call this the isolation Rat Cave because it was just me here. But, like, now that you're back, you know, this is just, it's, it's back to the normal Rat Cave again. But you would never know that it's in a secret location. Hey, it's good. Mate, it's good. I like it. I like it. I like yeah. it. And the views we've got around us are absolutely the gorgeous. views. Are be- the yeah, views over are. to that side, people can't see all the mess that's over there. But that way, it looks yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, what you guys are seeing looks exactly like we're sitting in Newbury at DJ Kit. Yeah, we standing yeah. more like. Yeah. Well, we may or may not be, but uh, but yeah. So, mate, I've got you back. Like I did my overview video on the brand new Pioneer. DJ CDJ 3000. I saw. I, yeah, saw. I, I was going to do a brief one, but I knew it wasn't going to be brief. It ended up being... It's a, never brief with you, uh, Ratsy. <laughs> <laughs> it ended up being a proper deep dive in in the end. So today, what I wanted to do with you is compare the brand new CDJ 3000 against the old CDJ 2000 Nexus 2. Let's do it. Sound good? Yeah. Cool. Let's get into it then. Okay, right mate, so we've got the CDJ2000 Nexus 2 in the middle here, sandwiched in between the brand new CDJ3000. That's the one. So, first of all, you can see that the 2000 is actually a little bit smaller than the 3000s in length. Yeah. Uh, they're about the same width-wise, I think, but a little bit smaller in length. Slight difference in width, only slightly. Okay. Uh, but in the length, yeah. Yeah, like a li- little bit of a difference here, and that is, I guess, to make way for the big old screen, right? That's the one, mate, that's the <laughs> yeah. one. So let's talk about the main differences between the actual screens on the two then. Yeah, so on the Nexus 2, you've got a 7-inch non-HD screen. Yeah. And then we jump over to a large 9-inch full HD 1280 by 720. Okay. And the main difference you're going to notice is this section here has been completely taken away. Yeah. And we've relocated that into one hardware button, which is located under source. Yeah. So the source is when you're going to be able to see what's connected to the player. Mm-hmm. At the minute, we've got the USB. As you can see at the top of the unit, it's the color indicator on this one is blue because this is where Ratsy's USB is loaded. And mine is purple, showing where my USB is loaded. Yeah. Great for back-to-back DJing, uh, also transferring onto the next DJ in a set. So as I've mentioned, we've taken this part away and added it into a hardware button. On this screen, uh, you can clearly see what's connected and you can also see a little bit about your USB. You've got your dates, how much storage you've got on there, and you can easily change the color of your USB on this tab here. Yeah, which you can't do on the, you, you have to go in the record box to do that. That's in right? the preferences of record yeah. box uh, on the Nexus 2. So it's great that you can now change that on the fly and obviously loading your settings, which is super quick and super easy. Yeah. So what we'll do, Ratsy, is we'll move around the unit comparing the two. Yeah, okay. Button for button. Yeah, perfect. What this one has, what this one hasn't, and what we've taken away. So moving on from the source, we have browse, um, hardware button. And on this one, you need to click onto the actual browse page. Yeah. So this is essentially like your home page now. Um, as you can see, there's clear differences. You can see a lot more text. Um, Visually, it looks a lot more clearer because obviously we said about the screen differences. It, it looks more like record box actually on your laptop kind of record box rather than it just being minimal text and stuff here. You know, well, first of all, there's a lot more on there. You can see 12 lines of information you when see, you've got it on the small set. You can see steps. artwork, you can see all that stuff. But also down the side here, that's where it's different. Yes, um, the category. Yeah, the, the category. Area. Basically, we're giving you more of a software experience on the 3000 then you're getting on the 2000 Nexus 2. Yeah. We'll go more into the screen in the moment, but let's carry on moving through the buttons. Yep. Tagless, we've kept on both ones, a very popular feature, and I'm glad we've still got it there. Next, we have playlists on our 3000, but we don't have it on the 2000 Nexus 2. The reason why we've added this as a hardware button is because it's the most usable category that everyone that's, goes that's to. That's your go-to yeah, category. Yeah, every Be- time I go into a club, I always jump on playlists first. Well, you, when you're preparing for a set in the club, nine times out of 10, you've already actually prepared a playlist of songs that you're going to play in that That's correct. So that makes complete sense to add an actual playlist kind of shortcut button along the top there, yeah. Next, we have the search button on the 3000. And to get that on our 2000, we need to hold the browse bot. Going into the search area of the screen, as you can see, we 
got the the keyboard still on both that look very similar but touch screen qwerty keyboard on it's both. just a lot larger on the 3000s yeah next we have our menu and we've kept this on here as well but the difference is when you go into utility settings we have categories rather than a continuous scroll yeah a lot more easier to to locate what settings you want to be changing yeah quicker as yeah. well yeah now let's go to the navigation area of the unit I feel like we've made this one look a lot more beefier and industrial now by taking out the area around the edge that we have on here and we've kind of made it into its own. Yeah, stands out a lot more. It does, yeah. I just feel like it just looks a little bit more mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, it's just, but I love it, it looks great. Moving down from that, we have our vinyl speed adjusts. This is where we've taken a pot away. So yeah, so on here, you've got one for the touch break and one for the release start. Whereas on the 3000 now, when you go into the utility settings. Vinyl speed adjust. Vinyl speed adjust. You can have a combination between touch and release yeah. or just touch and release. Or touch or release, sorry. Yeah. Moving down from that, we have our jog mode, which is the same. Vinyl CDJ. And then we jump into this little area here where we've added an extra hardware button. We've got beat sync and master seal. Yeah. And now we've got key sync. Yeah, key sync missing from there. Um, that Ratsy, you went into a lot into your previous video. I did, I did, yeah. So guys, just to say on this video, yeah, we are just comparing the Nexus 2 and the 3000 head to head. Um, if you want the full ins and outs of all of the features, the link to my overview of the 3000 will be in the description of this video, yeah? Yeah, yeah. But the key sync feature, again, uh, a hardware button that we've added. We've got it on, like say, our record box and stuff. But yeah. The algorithm built into the CDJ3000 is a lot more superior to what we've got in other units. And it's made the key sync seamless. And I love using it. Yeah. So like I actually said, guys, go check that out in his other video if you want to see that in some more detail. Moving down from that, we're going to look at our tempo, master tempo and pitch fader as one because they're essentially the same. Yeah. The difference is you're going to see, I'm just going to quickly mention this. These two areas down here are almost sectioned off and then you've got this area in the middle. On the 3000, we have the aluminium face paint and on here we have split sections. Yeah. A lot more cleaner, visually looks looks nicer to me, don't look as busy. Looks more like of an all-in-one unit rather than it being split up. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so yeah, the same tempo, uh, you've got 6, 10, 16 and wide options, same master tempo button in the same place and also the same size pitch fader which doesn't have the click in the middle on no. either one. I thought that the Nexus 2 had the click because when you showed me the 3000, I was like, it's missing the click. I was like, check the Nexus 2. Yeah, yeah, and I checked it and there's no click on the Nexus 2, but you do have the tempo reset button, which is the faster way to get to zero anyway, yeah. uh, which you've got on the 3000 as well. Just to mention, even though the hardware um, buttons are the same in this area, Again, it's the MPU in the 3000 that changes this area. So it's when you're listening to the music, it's basically the best time stretching algorithm we've been able to achieve on a single player. Right. So again, you can't obviously see that visually from just looking at the buttons, but under the hood of the 3000 is where all the power lies. Sure. So we're gonna move on from this area and swiftly go over to the queue and play. Hold on, mate, hold on. Before you swiftly move past the fact that the Nexus 2, the 2000 Nexus 2, it's got a CD drive in it. That's correct. The CDJ3000 doesn't have a CD drive in it. That's correct, Ratsy. It doesn't have a CD drive, because um, me personally, I only use USB. Uh, just to check, what do you use to DJ? I, yeah, I use USBs for sets under two hours, or I use HID mode with a laptop for sets over two hours. So I, I haven't used uh, CDs for a while. It arguably is something which is a bit old school now, which makes me feel super old, but, <laughs> You know, people, some people still wanted no, it, mate. I, that, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. Um, all I can say is that if anybody at home is wondering why we've taken it out and people know that like this is kind of more expensive part of the unit and they're looking at the prices, look at it this way. We have taken that away and the money used for that has been utilised in other areas of the unit to give it that power. Right, okay. So it's not like we've just taken it away and then like put the price up like, that money has been spent elsewhere within the unit, making this unit like the most powerful multiplayer on the market. So I know it hasn't got the CD drive, but give it a year or two time, hopefully people would have forgot about that and moved on from it and gone on to the USBs. But like we said, Ratsy, from our research, we can see there are still some CDJ, CD users there. Yeah. The majority of the market lies in the USB section. So let me just finally squash the thing which everyone has been saying about this. 
If it doesn't have a CD drive in it, what does CDJ stand for? Wherever you want it to be, like you could say that this is a, a club DJ player. Um, or compact DJ player. Compact DJ player. But the main reason, guys, why we've kept the CDJ name is because the CDJ name holds legacy. We all know CDJ to be in our club standard player. Uh, whenever you mention CDJ Ratsy, I'm always thinking of our Nexus 2. And now I'll be thinking of our 3000. To be honest, right, the term CDJ has almost become, you know how you call like a Hoover a Hoover? Yeah. Instead of like a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. You know, Hoover was a name of a brand. Of, yeah, of, yeah. A vacuum cleaner. Yeah. But you call it a Hoover. It's just something that happens. So it's people, an iconic name. That people we use, use the term CDJs for non-pioneer products. You know, yeah. and, and it's just like you said, it's been embedded in people's heads that that's the name for a club standard or like, a, you know. A and big... especially for us as Pioneer, we have a clear series of CDJs starting from like our CDJ 500, moving to our 1000, right, where okay. we jump up to our 2000. So a lot of people have been saying, you know, why isn't it called the XDJ? And the XDJ is more, it, it's a lower range product compared to this, right? It's oh. more affordable. Like you would, you would more likely see someone at home, a bedroom DJ or a mobile DJ, using an X DJ yeah. rather than the CDJ, and that's why you wanted to keep this as your club standard and use the same name. I feel like it's more of a our X DJs are more stripped back from our CDJs. Right. Uh, actually, our X DJs have a lot of the same hardware buttons, but they're just implemented within the screen. Yeah. Um. For example, when we go onto the screen, I can actually show you that area where we have like a kind of hybrid between XDJ software buttons, but in the 3000s. So the CDJ does have some features of our XDJ range, but this has got the power of our CDJ range. Yeah. And this is why this is our club standard unit uh, because of all the things I've just listed previous to this and more than what we're about to go yeah. into. Am I okay to move on now? You're fine now, mate. I just need to get that off of my buttons. chest. It's for the people, mate. Cool. cool. It's yeah, for no, the no, people no, what no, I no. Yeah, it's give the people what they want, give mate. Give the people what they want. Cool, right, he does. <laughs> Gives the people what they want. Um, no, it's all cool, man. I fully expected that question, but just embrace the technology going forward. Sure. I've done that about five years ago. Anyway, so <laughs> we've got our cue and play and new components. Yeah. Harder wearing. So they, they look the same. They're in the same place, but... Vigorous testing. Yes. Right. You saw the teaser video. I did, which had the the, uh, the metal button pushing yeah. down. I think a lot of people got onto that actually because it was it was the main one of the main features really repetitive. Of the teaser video. Yeah, yeah. Of, of the teaser video. And so that is a huge part. So just to say the stats, I think I said it in my overview video, but it's seven hundred thousand with the Nexus two. When it started to see a couple of faults, like yeah. you know maybe a like little bit of like lagginess or whatever. Um, but with this, we've gone up to 1 million pushes and we didn't see any failure. So it could be over a million, really. Oh, it is, a, it yeah. is over a million. It's not going to blow up on 1 it's million not hits. Blow up, right? So if anyone reaches past that, let us know. Yeah. And how many hits have you done on yeah. the button? DJ EZ would be going through these like no one's business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I can assure you for anyone that wants to buy this for a club installation or anyone who's going to buy these and have various people playing on them, yeah. the components have been improved and they're going to last longer, which obviously is going to save money. Yeah, for sure, way. especially with a club that's open a few times a week with, you know, multiple DJs each night. People like you going in there, Ratsy, mate, <laughs> hammering those buttons. <laughs> that's what I do, mate. <laughs> so, <laughs> Give yeah. the people what they want and hammer <laughs> buttons. That's me right there. <laughs> but uh, it's great that we've, uh, we've improved the components. And again, we've done that with the hot cue button. So the testing has been done on... The cue and the play has also been done. On yeah. The hot okay. Buttons. We'll get onto the hot cue buttons in a little bit, yeah. but that is great because people do play hot cues like cue buttons. They smash them and, and they, and they juggle correct. and all that kind of stuff. But we'll get onto that in a minute. Let's yeah. keep going upwards here, mate. So search and track search, exactly the same in the same position. Slip reverse, yeah. forward and obviously reverse switch, same place, um, same position. Now let's get up to this section here on the 2000 Nexus 2. This is where your hot cues were. So you had four hot cues here. You could do eight, but you have to change the bank on the bottom here, right? That's correct. So the hot cues on the 3000, you've got eight lovely hot cues underneath the screen. Yes, which you can choose to have in color when you set them on the unit now. Yep. Which previously, as you can see on here, they set 
straight into the colour of green. You then go into the box and then change your hot cue colours after. Yeah. Now you get the option in the utility settings to be able to have it like this within green, or as you set them like Ratsy's done on this unit, they go in colour straight away. Mm -hmm. Another great thing about having the hot cues just below the screen is they almost become like an extension of your waveform. Yeah, I actually, funny mate, I actually said that in my overview video is um, if we just get the waveform up. So, you know, the waveform along the bottom of the screen here, obviously when you put a hot cue in, um, let me just get rid of some of these. Um, so if I put a hot cue in there, you see the hot cues as they're coming along. So it's almost like, you're hitting the hot cues almost like you're hitting the waveform because they're directly underneath. Yeah, yeah. And tell, like, the other thing about the positioning of, of these hot cues, because there again has been a lot of talk about why aren't they situated underneath the job wheel rather than underneath the screen. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, what for what me. What was the process that we went through? What was to the get process? Decision? For me, can I say what I think? Certainly. Yeah, and then you correct me if this is correct or not. I'll yeah? never correct. Your opinion is your opinion. <laughs> right, yeah, but what I'm saying is it might be my opinion. Never wrong. No, I think it might be wrong. correct. No. Yeah, oh, it fair. could be, it could be. <laughs> so, with the 2000 Nexus 2s, your hot cues are here. Yes. Right? Um, I think these are what, are what are in the clubs right now, club standard, 2000 Nexus 2. Yes. The 3000s are going to be the new club standard. That's correct. So, the people that are playing, that are used to playing on the 2000 Nexus 2s, when they're hitting their hot cues, they're going up here, right? With the hot cues on the 3000, if you were to put them down here, that's quite your muscle memory and, and where you're going with it and stuff, that, you know, you're, you're gonna be go, oh no, I'm down here, you know? So sort of putting them along here, they're still close to where they used to be, but they're laid out in a better way because you've got eight rather than having to flip through the four. And along like this, you can almost play them like a keyboard, right? Yes, yes. That's was I far off with that or was that? No, you're pretty bang on, okay. you're pretty bang on. Another thing to add to that, uh, some more research that we've done, um, over 200 artists were involved in the research of this, of this CDJ. And it was almost like 100% the people said that they wanted it above the jog wheel right. rather than below. And one of the main reasons and seeing this from our research as well, we watched a lot of videos of just people DJing from every genre. And we noticed that a lot of people rest their hands on the bottom of the CDJ mm. to use the pitch bend and to, tw to tweak their track in and out. Yeah. Um, I do personally myself, and I'm so happy we didn't put them below the jog wheel because it would have had to change the way I DJ. And this kind of coincides with what you've just said about the muscle memory and then being in a familiar position close to home on the yeah. left hand side. But people do as well. I've seen a lot of people playing hot cues like this with their hand rested like that. You can still do that along here, you yeah, know, obviously, yeah, unless yeah, yeah. you've got very small hands. <laughs> yeah, then you're in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. But then you can't hate because we've given you a massive screen. So sure. it's like, you can't have them all. Yeah. You can't have the big hands and massive screen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like we've said, Raxi, uh, the hot cues being in this position um, in a linear fashion as well, it's just, for me, it makes it a usable tool now. Yeah. Previously, I never really used the hot cues because... I mean, they're a bit hidden almost on there, right? Well, the way we, when you look at it like this, they do feel hidden. Mm. So, and you would never know from looking at this, there are, as, as a second bank and there's another sure. hot cues. So here, visually, we can see there's eight hot cues. The way you use them is a lot more user-friendly. And for me personally, I've started to actually use these in my sets. And, right. and you did it before. I did it before. So for me, the change has actually been a massive benefit. Moving away from the hot cues and jumping back onto our 3000, because this area here is still different to this one here. Yeah. So our looping section um, is still the same. Yep. Literally, when I talk about our series of CDJs, this has originated from our CDJ 500. Yeah. It's great to still see when I was looking at the over the past years, there's features on this unit, on this unit that correlates between all the ranges. Yes. Which is what I wanted to say about the hot cues and different things. And one of the things that Pioneer DJ do very well is this is shown within our DDJ 200 to 1000 is we inherit a lot of features from different ranges yeah. moving all the way up to our multiplayer, which would be our CDJ, which is the club standard. Yeah. And the reason why we do that is so people can practice at home, walk into the club and feel at home. Sure. When designing and making the CDJ, we're going from this to this. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We didn't want to go in there and completely change where everything is because we still want our DJs to walk into the booth and feel like they're at home. No, everything is. That's, that's kind where of like... Where these subtle changes have kind of 
not made me think, I don't know where everything yes, is. Yeah. Ju- I've just been able to walk straight on yeah, and, well, it goes and back know to, everything. It goes back to muscle memory again, like yeah, I said about yeah. people going for the hot cues up here. If the loops were in a different place, you know, or whatever, then you would be, especially when you're, when you're quickly banging a loop, you want to know exactly where it is without yeah, thinking. Yeah, no, 100%. And that- I, I com- I'm completely behind you, mate, about not reinventing the wheel in that, it needs to be almost similar to the 2000 Nexus 2 because this is what, I mean, this has been five years in the clubs. So, yeah, well, and, and just, to, just to mention that, that people are still buying these, people are still using these, like on every artist across the world, this is their rider um, unit. This is what they want in their rider every week. And it's not like they're even complaining. They're still happy with this. Sure. And we've given them a unit that is just, in terms of look wise, very similar, but in the power and the screen and all these different things, it's just like under the hood is where all the power lies in this CDJ. It's great that this little area here, same on the 2000, is exactly the same. Uh, especially the Q, Q core. I use memory you, all the you time. You do, yeah, you all do. Which tracks. I don't, actually. Weird guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't use the hot keys. No, 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 I'm joking, I'm joking. No, I, Everyone's different rat seat. Yeah. I know so many DJs that use hot cues as their main marker to start their tracks where I use the cue call uh, and use the cue button yeah. a lot more. So for me, having these in the same place is so important. Yeah. Where the big difference is in terms of hardware buttons from the 3000 to the 2000 is this little area here. So we have now added beat jump as a physical hardware button. On the 2000, uh, the beat jump is located in the software and on the screen itself. Your options are limited. You've got a two, a four, an eight, and a 16 beat jump. Whereas on the 3000, there's two pages on the beat jump, right? That's correct, yeah. So you've got your first page, which you can even go up uh, into a, a half beat on this page, and it goes into a one, two, and then a four, and then your second page, the parameters just get wider. Literally, actually, I think this has been one of my, one of my favorite features of the new update, because I was awful for mixing and then missing my cue points so for example my cues are every 16 bars right and for example if i've missed that cue point i before had to count eight bars yeah okay forward now with a touch of one button i can jump forward eight bars and if i jump forward another eight bars i know that's going to be the drop of the track yeah so for me i'm able to catch bars differently if i've missed them another great thing about the beat jump is i can set a loop and I can then shift that loop depending on what the value is of my beat jump. So at the minute it's on 32 beats and I can shift that 32 beats across my track. So you've got a four bar loop that you're shifting 32 beats forward. That's correct. Yeah, it doesn't snap to like four, because you've got a four bar loop, it has to shift forward four bars. No, you can it's... change the value of how much you want to shift your loops, which is just like a, a really nice touch. Yeah. And just a quick one, I think you mentioned it before, Ratsy, to change the value of your beat jump, you use this button here, which is the hot cue call and delete. Yep. And as you can see on the screen there, the value is changing depending on if I go up or go down. Yep. Moving on from our beat jump, we have our looping area. So we have a four beat loop that you can jump straight into, the same as our Nexus 2. Yep. We've now added a hardware eight beat loop that you can jump straight into. Yeah, so you can do eight beats on here, but you have to shift it, right? Yeah, you have to, on this one, you would go into your four beat loop and then you would use this to shift it into an eight beat loop right. or use the screen. Yeah. You can do the same thing on here, but it sets, you can adjust your loops using the four and the eight. Just and again, you can still adjust the loops by using your cue call as well. Yeah, but so you can also adjust the loops with the touch screen. About too. three different ways you can use to adjust your loops. And I've just jumped into it there, like ahead of, if you go onto the second page, you've got the odd number loops. The off beats. So off beats, That's yeah. how you achieve your poly rhythms. Poly rhythms. Here we go, mate. Now, now we're talking. You want to jump into some polyrhythmic loops and that's easily done by using the second page. Yeah. Another great thing about the 3000, which it doesn't do on the 2000, it remembers whatever state you've left the page in. So for example, if I want to jump out of my loop, at the minute I've got it on page two. So I jump out of my loop, but I want to jump back into the loop. There's two things that the 3000 does, which I really like. It leaves a marker to let you know where your loop's gonna jump back into. Right. And it also, just below the waveform, shows you the value of the loop you're jumping into. Oh, okay, cool. So when I recall the loop, it's gonna jump back, and I can see the value, 
and it's kept on the second page. Mm -hmm. The last things you're gonna see that are different, we've moved two buttons, quantize and slip. We've just located them to the left-hand side of the screen, and I actually really like them there because they're visually, you can see them, they light up very clearly. Whereas on this one, it was always quantize was there. A lot of people would say to me, oh, my loops aren't snapping to the grid. Sure. I can't find the quantize yeah. button. If it's not on, then yeah, it's you, might, you might to not see. see it. Yeah, And then your slip button is very small down here. So having them on the left-hand side of the unit in their own area, um, it kind of makes them independent and I always know where they are. I can clearly see if they're on or off. So another redesigned feature on the CBJ3000 is our jog wheel. Yeah. A lot of people love the jog wheel on the 2000, no complaints on it. And I have the same thoughts around this one. I love the 3000 jog wheel. I've got no complaints. It's smoother. It is. Which we've, we've reduced the sound because we've got less moving parts in this jog wheel. Yeah. Overall, we've reduced the latency by half compared to the Nexus 2. And we've got the on-job display, which shows for artwork, uh, your beat sync, master, slip mode, and vinyl mode. So visually and inside the unit, the jog wheel is a lot better. Yeah, yeah. And the just feedback so far has been great. Just, just to sort of... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you can hear the difference, but yeah. like I say, there's um, less moving parts, which it, means the sound's been reduced massively. It feels so much more smooth, man. And having the display in the jogs is, you know, that's that's great. We've seen that on the DDJ range and stuff. So actually, this is one of the things that I wanted to ask you. I did say this, and I said what I thought about it in my overview video, but why haven't you put the waveforms in there and, and the BPM inside the jog wheels like you see on the DDJ-1000 or the 800 or, or whatever. So the reason being Ratsy is because we've given you a nine inch screen that displays bigger waveform that you get on the 2000 Nexus 2. We didn't want to overdo the experience by adding another waveform within the screen. Sure. You've got to remember there's where this is going to lie. This lies in the clubs. Yeah. You have some sort of connection with the crowd. We don't want this to become uh, a, a laptop where people are just looking at this all the time and yep. lose that connection with okay. the crowd. Okay, yeah, that's that's kind of what I said um, in, in my overview is that it was to put the waveforms and stuff inside the screen here was to stop you from having to look with your head in your laptop. Yeah. Whereas here, you know, you don't need it in there because you've got this big old screen which shows it to you anyway. It's a lot bigger and, and all the information's in there and it would just be so, just too overwhelming to have like double waveforms um, on one unit, I don't feel it's needed. And but the artwork is just nice because like you've done there, you manage your logo. Yeah, it? sure, sure. But going forward, I mean, we'll get on to like the, the MPU and stuff yeah. towards the end of the video, but going forward, this might be something which you can implement down the line with an update or, or whatever, you know, whether or not you do want it in there because, because of the MPU, this CDJ3000 is more, you can update it more. Whereas because the 2000 Nexus 2 doesn't have a computer in it, that was where it was, right? There was yeah. no real proper We can't update. change that screen. Yeah. Like that. We've reached this limitation yeah. for this unit. We've pushed it to the max. And it's great that DJs still love playing with it and there's no complaints on it. Visually, we come to the end of its lifespan with the Nexus 2. Yeah. The big difference is visually on this one, again, as we've mentioned, it's been improved massively. But the future of this is so much more promising. Yeah. Uh, you're buying into something that's going to be developed going forward um, and definitely going to have some really cool features coming. Yeah. So let's jump in and look at the two most popular pages, which is the playlist page on both units. So on here, we've jumped into a playlist and I've jumped into a playlist on my 3000. As you can see, massive improvements. Firstly, on the left hand side, we can see the waveform yeah. of the track. Exactly the same as our record box, so it's familiar. A complete new feature that you mentioned before, actually, is yeah. a touch preview that isn't on yeah. this unit and is very, very handy mm -hmm. when you want to preview a track. You don't have to load it. Again, it's eliminating them seconds that are crucial within a second. It's not just that, but maybe a new track that you don't, you're not familiar with just looking at the name of it compared to what exactly. it sounds when like. Exactly, you, when you've load, yeah, when yeah. You put quite a few tracks on. Yeah, you can listen to it see. before you load it. So what you can do uh, when you're actually previewing the track, you can latch it and move your finger away and then pinpoint exactly where you want to preview the track. Right, okay, yeah. Great feature, Yeah. really handy. The next thing I want to quickly highlight in here is the different roads that we've got. So here you've got two. 
Here we can see our track number, the tracks, and our BPM key, and then we have additional sub column that we can then add by these two arrows here. And I've got my different options here. So for example, let's put on date added, and I can now see the dates added. And then if I want to sort that into the dates, I just press the sort button at the top, and there we go. I've changed that column. Mm -hmm. Where this is most beneficial for me is on the BPM and key side. Before, I had to press the menu, sort, and then into key or BPM. That's three clicks. Yeah. Here, with one touch, I've just arranged that whole playlist into key. Yeah. Super quick. Yeah, for sure. Making the most of that bigger screen. Really. 100%, 100%. The next thing is loading. So you had to click to load a track on the Nexus 2. Yeah. Now I can click on the track I want, and then it's got load in the BPM and key column. It won't load if I press around that. You have to press within the BPM and key area to actually load the track. Now we've loaded the track, you're gonna see some big changes. Firstly, it's the waveform. Yeah. Three yeah. times bigger. Three times bigger on, on the 3000. A 10 mil waveform to a 30. Another feature you're gonna notice has changed is the size of the phase meter. On the Nexus 2, you're looking at a 40 mil phase meter and jumping over to our 3000, we've got 115 mil phase meter, a considerable amount. Oh yeah, mate. Yeah, well you can definitely see, you know, and, and it's actually, I almost feel sometimes that gets lost. Um, it's not something which I ever used while I was DJing on these um, because it is quite small at the top, but that you can fully notice. Yes. And, but then another feature on the 3000 is if you're not going to use the phase meter, stack waveform, right? Stack waveform. Just yeah. to mention, stack waveform works when you are Pro DJ linked or connected via Ethernet cable with another 3000. Yeah, so let's get a, another tune in, in, track in there. there. I'm going to use the touchscreen load. And I can toggle between phase meter and then the stacked waveform by pressing this area here. And if I make the 3000 the master, I'm then going to see the waveform on the master deck. By you can't see the slave waveform on no. the master player but the master player waveform shows on That's that correct. one there, And yeah. we can visually see cue points, uh, hot cue points. And if, depending on my zoom rate, um, changes how much of the track I'm seeing. Yeah. Another really cool thing when looking at this area is the beat grid just below the waveform. Yeah. We don't have it on the 2000 Nexus 2. Uh, and if I zoom right in, I can see up to six beats. And if I zoom all the way out, I can see up to 192 beats. Cool. If you haven't prepared your track, it's great to see what's going to happen in the future. Sure. Another feature which is really handy for me as a drum and bass DJ is the touch cue feature. Yeah. Being able to preview what's going on later on in the track. Yeah. Really beneficial. And alongside that, being able to see the structure of my tune. Uh, yeah. So I know which bars I need to where set the, the, where the bars are and the stuff. cue at. Yeah. Again, it latches and I can move um, across my waveform really easily. There's two more things I want to mention. Down the bottom here, visually, this area here with your auto hot cue, auto cue, it's just bigger, easier to see. Um, and a feature that wasn't on the 2000 is the key down here. Yeah. So with the master tempo on, that locks the key. Yep. With the master tempo off, same with this. When you're changing the speed of this track, I'm actually changing the key of it. Yep. And drum and bass is normally around 174, and I mix at 180. Um, so I've gone from B minor up to C minor just by changing the pitch. Yeah. Visually, I never knew what key I was going into on this on the 2000. Yeah. Now the 3000. It's taken my harmonic mixing to the next level yeah, because yeah. I'm now mixing tunes I'd never normally mix in with using the master tempo to lock it or take it off so I can switch into a different key. Yeah, and it goes back to using the key sync as well, you yeah. know, for your harmonic mixing and everything. Real powerful tool in that 3000, mate, because yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a guy that mixes in key, so and we've also got the info button here to see the ID tracks on the tag. Here it's located within the screen. You just press the second line where it's got the I, and then you've got the same information coming up. Yeah. Overall, the the play screen has been massively improved, and it's it's just great to see. It's great to see the stacked waveform, um, your visualization of your beats uh, and your bars. It does everything right for me. Mm. Moving away from the screen, we're going to quickly jump to the back of the unit and yeah. see what we've got going on. Yeah. 
So on the back of the unit, we have got your V-Lock power. And that's not on the Nexus 2. That's right. That That's something that we implemented on the V10. Yeah. And it's great to see it on our club standard multiplayer now. Yeah. We have the classic RCA, yeah. which you'll get the cable for that, the analog cable. We've also got the digital out. So when you buy the 3000, you get the RCA cable and the digital cable included. But when you buy the 2000 Nexus 2, it was just the RCA, no digital. That's correct. Yeah. The biggest difference on the back for me uh, is where we put our ethernet cable. Yeah. That's been upgraded to gigabit ethernet, mm -hmm. which means now we can connect up to six decks via Pro DJ Link. With the 2000 as it stands now, um, you can only connect four decks. Yeah, okay. So the good thing about actually using the digital out rather than the RCA, that's when you get that optimum sound yes. that these new 3000s have got, right? Yes. So what, like, what's, what's the difference between? So the CDJ 3000, what it does, it converts all playable audio formats to 96 kilohertz and 32 bit. Right, okay. This process is 32-bit float, which means you're gonna reach the highest sound quality via the digital out going into either a V10 or a 900 Nexus 2. Nice. If you wanna go in order, this is the highest sound quality, and then this comes next. Okay. So 100% improvement in sound. Yeah. Um, and then you go into the MPU, which is our multi-core processor. And I've mentioned it a few times in this video, but that is the driving force of this unit. Yeah. So when it comes to comparing these two units, Ratsy, I've talked about the high quality sound. That's matched up with the multi-core processor that we've got built inside, something yeah. that we don't have in the Nexus 2. The multi-core processor allows us to have our lightning fast loading times, yeah. hot cues, high quality key shifts, and our touch preview and touch cue which also plays back at 96 kilohertz. Yeah, so it's basically all, it, the, the, the new MPU is powering all of the new standout features on the 3000. Yeah, and allowing it to be as fast as it is, yeah. loading the tracks as quick, it's all faster than the Nexus 2. And been, testing's been done on both, and it's clear that the CDJ3000 is far more superior to the CDJ2000 Nexus 2. So mate, I reckon that's a pretty good place to wrap this up. Yeah. Um, I mean, in, to conclude, when you put these two head to head, like we have just done the 3000 versus the 2000 Nexus 2, it really does show the standout features on the 3000 and how far it has come. Yeah. But obviously, unless you're play, like a fan of playing CDs, playing CDs then, yeah, then yeah, you yeah, do yeah. need to stick the to the 2000 Nexus 2. But it's like we said, this has been in the 2000 Nexus 2 has been in the clubs for five years and there's been no still complaints there. about exactly. it. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, it, the step up to the 3000, everything's in a similar place and you will feel right at home on the 3000, but you've got all those extra bits and bobs. And hopefully with that powerful MPU room to add some more stuff in certainly, the future. Yeah, certainly. I'm sure we'll be back doing another video on some future updates on this. Hopefully, mate. I always love having you here. <laughs> um, right, guys, so I'm going to leave it there. If it's been helpful, like the video, subscribe to the DJ Kit page, tag people, share the video, do all of the stuff which gets my views up. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much. Sammy, one more time, mate. Thank you so much for coming. And, uh, yeah, guys, that was the CDJ3000 versus the CDJ2000 Nexus 2. Till next time, peace.